Welcome to the Deal Doctor live stream. Today we have a special guest, Lindsay Dykstra, and we're going to talk today about a um, recent sort of development with inspections called uh, inspections for information purposes only. You've, uh, I'm sure, heard of it out there that it's happening out there on offers. And I want to share this experience with you uh, that Lindsay had uh, recently with, with, with such an offer that came through on one of her listings. So, without further ado, mm -hmm. welcome, Lindsay. Uh, thank you for having me. And go ahead and uh, share with yeah. uh, our audience what, what happened. Yeah. Well, I had to set the background so everyone's kind of aware. I had a couple going through a divorce. Um, they needed to list their house immediately. So we didn't even have, a lot of times when I go through a listing, I mean, I have my process. And for them, they needed to get the house on the market. They wanted their proceeds and they wanted to be done with it basically. So we went live on the market, had multiple offers. Um, I presented offers to my seller and one of the offers waived inspections. And if you would have walked through this home, it was very well lived in. There was a lot of handyman special fixes in the home. Um, and it brought a lot of concerns to me of how, you know, what would happen during inspections. So as I'm presenting offers to my sellers, one, they waived inspections only, but they wrote in the bottom of the offer, for buyer's purpose only, we would have a five day inspection period. So prior to me even listing or presenting offers to my sellers, I went back to the agent and I just clarified in an email, can you please explain to me, you waived, the, you waived your rights to your inspection, but you wanna have buyer purpose only um, a five day period. And she did clarify, yes, don't worry, we're not gonna back out our earnest money. You know, we had a $5,000 earnest money deposit, but this is just so that my buyer can be prepared prior to moving in. So as I'm presenting offers to my seller, I made them aware before they even accepted this offer what my hesitation was. Frankly, I have never wrote a buyer purpose only inspection because I don't know how you can ever be successful doing it. Um, but they ended up picking it, of course, because they just wanted to move forward. It was not the highest offer, but they wanted just to get to the closing table and be done. I mean, it was a very, you know, and, and you're clarifying, I think that's a really important point, and, and I want to uh, uh, spend a moment on it. Mm -hmm. you're, you went out of your way to clarify that this was only for the buyer's information. It was, there Correct. was not going to be a termination of the mm -hmm. purchase agreement or a request for repairs, mm -hmm. that it was just so that they could be prepared mm -hmm. uh, for what to expect when they moved in. Correct. And that was through text messages, emails? It what? was through email, and I did it specifically through email, so it was documented. Okay. Yep. Um, and, and that's important. Um, so, of course, uh, let's go to the what happened then? Yes, moment. what happened then? <laughs> so we accepted the offer. They had their inspection, and immediately I started getting text messages from the listing agent. Did you know that this is happening, this is happening, but the biggest thing was there was mold. The whole attic was full with mold. My seller had no knowledge of it. They actually had a brand new roof put on the year before. Um, and then my first reaction was, well, I did not know that, nor did my seller, but this was for your purpose only, your inspection for information purpose only. Well, immediately um, within hours, I had an email from her she had copied her broker on it and said it was health and hazard and it needed to be fixed by my seller. So of course, um, I'm going to interrupt. Yeah. So, so help me understand the agent and broker took the position that because it was a health and safety hazard mm -hmm. in their view, they had a right to terminate or that they could supersede or preempt the very language uh, that they had put in the purchase agreement. Is that what I'm understanding? Correct. And so I immediately called you, Don, just to make sure I was in the right by, hey, there is no health and hazard. I mean, I have sold homes far distressed and conventional financing. Um, there was no health and hazard. And you clarified that's correct. That is not a mm -hmm. thing, health and hazard. Um, it was, they were putting, uh, they were trying to get out. 
I mean, so from the after, right after the inspection, there was obviously they were trying to find some wedge to be able to get out because they had five thousand dollars on the earnest money, mm -hmm. and so I immediately had a conversation after that with my seller. I explained to them what was happening. Um, I gave them a couple scenarios, right, of things that potentially could happen. Um, but I already said to them, I already kind of, I said, if we don't fix it, and by all means, you don't have to fix it right now. I mean, there's nothing you have to fix right now. But if they were to walk away and lose their $5,000, we now have knowledge of mold in the attic and we need to fix it. So we got a, I had, we got a quote. Um, they said right off the bat, Lindsay, we're just going to fix it. We just, for them, they just wanted to be done. They wanted to close, um, and they wanted their money. So we took it upon ourselves and we we had the mold taken care of. Um, I got an invoice showing it, it had a five year transferable warranty. Um, so it, we did it right and I sent everything over um, to her and her broker and I had you copied on it and Paul. And then immediately we got a mutual release saying it wasn't good enough, um, which was, at that point, um, the appraiser had already went through, so I already knew that the buyer was paying for an appraisal because the appraisal went through. Um, and when I even sent the email back, I clarified, and as you know, I put in the portion of her email saying this is only for buyer's purpose only into the email. So everyone could see that, I mean, it was there was, there was no surprises at this point. Yeah. Um, what was the invoice amount for the... Um, uh, remediation of the mold in the attic you recall it was like 2800 2800 so mm -hmm. there's potentially 5000 plus 2800 mm -hmm. um, maybe even more mm -hmm. in damages potential damages to the seller yeah. that the seller could pursue correct or not mm -hmm. how did this play out so um after they sent the mutual release, we we didn't respond. I mean, honestly, at that point, we said we're gonna let the appraiser go through, um, and then we got an email from her with her broker on it saying that the appraiser with the appraisal basically said that in order for this to get financing, we needed to remove because what our the person we hired for the mold they basically sprayed it up there. They wanted everything removed completely, like all of the insulation, um, and they were not going to do financing if that was not done. Okay. Which so so they they, they they opted for the nuclear option. Mm -hmm. They went they went to the, the um, mortgage approval clause, which said if the mortgage isn't approved, right. then we have a right to get out and get our money back. Yes. So that was kind of the. Um, um, the backup plan, if you will. Am there were some suspicions, yes, that I think conversations had, you know, were had, and yes, because they were trying everything in their power to get their buyers five thousand dollars back. Yep. Okay. So, if you're <laughs> environmentalists, uh, environmental uh, remediation companies. Um, generally when it comes to mold in the attic uh, may have a different take on whether or not that's the appropriate uh, remediation. Um, but aside from that, I think the, the real question here is what, what could we do, is there anything moving forward, if we run into this again, mm -hmm. what can we do to um, make that clause this uh, these inspections are going to be for the buyer's information mm -hmm. purposes only. What can we do to make that more enforceable? Is yeah, it? correct. That's a good question. And honestly, my take is, and this is just from sitting on pro standards hearing boards, seeing issues come up, I don't know how you can do a buyer's purpose only and be successful. And I say that because what happens is your buyer is going to see, I mean, that's an inspector's job to pull out a bunch of mm -hmm. issues with a home or maintenance things or things that should be addressed. So if your buyer is so willingly right then and there to waive their rights to their home inspections, which is another maybe issue right now happening too fast, people are making that decision, is are they prepared that 
whatever comes up on there, you have foundation issues. I mean, anything that were to come up, that they are going to be okay with it. They're not going to blame you as an agent. They're not going to get over their head. And like in this situation, I mean, I, I knew right away as soon as that they had it and I started getting those text messages, I knew it was going south because, mm-hmm. you know, and, and I have a feeling that her clients, just through conversations, were very upset with her. Was it her decision as an agent to waive inspections? No, but in the middle, in the midst of it, a buyer, if they want a house, I mean, in two seconds, they'll say, yes, let's just waive inspections, but do they understand the consequences of that? Well, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that in, in, um, in, in, a, in a couple of minutes, but first of all, um, so, so if I am understanding you correctly, would you, in, if you got another offer like this mm-hmm. that said this is for buyer's information only, would you accept that offer or would you just throw it out and say, no, that's, that's not a clause we're going to even entertain? Yeah. Well, I, it's always up to the seller, right, mm-hmm. of what they just choose to do. Yeah. Um, and I made my seller aware of it because I don't like that at all. Um, but they were in a unique situation and they just needed to sell financially, emotionally. I will tell you this, if I was sitting against, you know, you're the seller and I'm presenting offers, I'm going to give this example of the story, you know, to my next seller. This is what could happen. Um, I mean, could they have went to court and fought over this $5,000? Absolutely. Did I explain to them their rights? You bet. Mm -hmm. But once again, they didn't want to deal with any of that. We ended up going back to market and and we got a, actually a higher offer, which shockingly also waived inspections. <laughs> but well, we did close on it. <laughs> <laughs> we're going we're to talk just a little bit about waiving inspections here for a moment because I think you raised an excellent point. It's always up to the seller mm-hmm. whether they choose to accept that language in there or not or even entertain offers which waive inspections altogether um, because there is a danger that the buyer's agent may not have fully explained the money that the buyer is going to have at risk in the event they ask for uh, repairs or they terminate the contract. Mm -hmm. There's always that question out there whether or not the the buyer's agent fully explained the ramifications of uh, uh, eliminating waiving inspections or making them for information purposes only. Mm -hmm. Um, So to that this is a HUD form. It says, for your protection, get a home inspection. And it goes on and explains uh, whether or not you're going to make a choice to have home inspections. They're not done automatically. The appraisal is not a home inspection, and it doesn't replace a home inspection. FHA uh, and lenders may not guarantee the condition of the pro- property or home inspections. Uh, may test for radon and so on. So if you present this information, this sheet, and get their buyer's signature down at the bottom, it will help protect you in the event they are, the buyers ever come back and claim that you didn't explain how important inspections were. We also have drafted some uh, language, as is language, which is in dot loop, um, and it also is in this form which uh, basically says, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it talks about what happens if the buyer removes their right to terminate or to perform inspections and so on. So further buyer and seller acknowledge they have been informed and advised. So all of these documents and lo and behold, there's also a addendum for inspections being waived. And it goes to the whether they're gonna have no inspections at all, uh, whether it's for informational purpose um, or it's inspections required for appraisal and or lender. And I encourage you mm-hmm. all to review these and, and know that we've made them available, we've created them for you to avoid situations in the future mm-hmm. that you're going to be faced with regarding inspections, waiving inspections, uh, protecting yourself with your buyers as well as protecting your sellers when they get an offer for informational purposes only or even waiving inspections. Um, It's all really important stuff right now and I would encourage you to be um, uh, well informed on this 
and, and have these things available to you. So um, I think Eric was actually going to load those up into the dot loop. Uh, you know what is so funny? Probably for three years now, at least three years, um, in the event I have a buyer who says, I want to waive inspections. I will go through why I recommend inspections. Mm -hmm. I will then tell them I'm going to send you a document that will stay in there. It's specific to the house. It will say your realtor, Lindsay Dykstra, has recommended. I put their names in there right. that, you know, why I recommend having inspections that you are giving it up. And I always created this like three years ago. We didn't have this, but I think that people in the moment get wrapped up in wanting a house so bad, but when you move in, it's like the honeymoon stage is gone. I, I, you're absolutely right. And it's important that we as agents, when we're operating for buyers, we load that into dot loop, uh, verification that we've shared that information, their acknowledgement mm -hmm. that we've shared it with them. And, it and that we really explain helps. this too to them. Yes. Not just had them sign it, but we explain it. Yeah, we, that we walk through the process. Um, and, and one more question, I guess. Let's go back to this uh, $5,000 earnest deposit. Um, is Could there have been language in there which in a counteroffer, mm -hmm. uh, we went back and said, well, um, okay, well, we're gonna accept your offer provided if you ask for inspect or repairs mm -hmm. as a result of inspections um, or attempt to terminate the offer for any reason, mm -hmm. uh, your earnest deposit will become immediately non-refundable. Yeah. I think especially the second thing you said is terminate for any reason because once they, once the appraiser flagged it, it was now financing, right? right? So had the appraiser not flagged it, I mean, Granted, I'm not an attorney. I don't know what would have happened, but I don't know how they would not have won. I mean, I feel like they would have if they would have went to court, but because it was flagged on an appraisal. So yes, if you would claim it, you're basically making your earnest money not refundable for any reason at that yeah. point. And in this particular market where the sellers have control uh, of the um, of the offers that are coming in, mm -hmm. uh, they, they basically are calling the shots out there. Yeah. It may be worthwhile to go back if you get one of these kind of offers that say for information purposes right. only, you go, okay, fine, we'll accept this provided mm -hmm. that if you terminate, attempt to terminate for any reason, um, this off you, your EMD mm -hmm. will be uh, immediately non-refundable. Mm -hmm. So, or they do it after closing. They have their inspection. I mean, if you are writing for your buyer mm -hmm. for information only, the question I also would have is, what is making them from now until you close and have possession potentially sixty days from now? Why do you need to have that? Like, if you're going to waive your inspections, like. Exactly. It's, it's, it's almost um, a nonsensical uh, to put that in there, but we understand it's happening out there. Yeah. So, Lindsay, thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Um, and thank you all for joining. I thank hope you. you found this helpful, and we'll see you next week.